Yeah. Yeah. Blue Alliance in December 2. And tell us about how this album started, because you're recording in, this, in a studio in, in London, in, in Chisney, and it, you weren't actually going to do a blues album. It just sung no, we were, we were recording some new songs, and we still are, but it was... Um, beautifully interrupted by these impromptu set of um, 12 blues songs that and started with Keith saying, uh, did you get my text about like uh, the, the uh, Little Walter song, Blue, Blue and Lonesome? I said, oh yeah, I love that song, you know, and uh, I love the mad guitar and the harmonica. And he, th and he said, well, maybe it will like the fuse under mix harmonica playing, you know, let's get him to play some more harp. And, and sure enough, after we played that one, Mick said, oh, let's try this, play them all. Let's try this one by Jimmy Reed. Let's try, you know, so it was great. And uh, so we did six songs uh, one day and six the next day, but just completely uh, hitting it impromptu. And that's what I loved about it, you know. And it's done live as opposed to yeah. bits and pieces here and there. And yeah. The less messing about with it, the better. And it sounds like it too. It sounds just legit, you know. It sounds real blues. Mm. And, and I don't know what production techniques were used, but it sounds like it could have been recorded, you know, any year of the last sort of 50 years. Well, Don was. We, we left that approach to him because he had all, all the, the drums and the guitars all set up. And Eric Clapton happened to be in the next studio, so he's on a couple of songs with us, which is absolutely great. And I love to play with Eric. And I think he plays really good with us, you know, it was just very special. Well, there's all the history there, you know, over the years. Um, you know, whether it's, uh, I'm just trying to think of that, that famous video of like Keith jamming uh, with, with, was it with Chuck Berry and then there's, there's Eric Clapton there as well. And, uh, you know, so Eric's obviously had lots of different players over the years. Yeah. And yeah. just happened to be next door. He's done live shows with us and uh, yeah. we've always had fun and um, a special place for, for Eric, yeah. So this is uh, your 23rd album, um, and it's the first sort of live album, sorry, the, the first brand new recording album in, in about a decade, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we've been just getting off and doing live gigs, and I didn't realise that amount of time had gone by. I didn't realise it had been 10 years since the studio album. Yeah. But uh, no, life goes on, and the older you get, the, the faster it goes. So <laughs> it's still like two years to me since we had an album out. You know? And you just come from the desert. You know, it's been, well, two shows there. And yeah. It's incredible uh, with that yeah. park as well. And, and I also got a show in, in Vegas. Uh, how'd, you, how'd you handle getting back together again after a little break? And oh, we, we don't like to stop. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's great. Uh, we just like the momentum to be uh, non-stop, really. I mean, we, we feel like we're just starting now, you know. And now, we've only got one left. You've got to tell your lovely wife you're going to be on the road for at least three years. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to New York. We're going to launch the uh, exhibitionism. And who knows what lays in store, you know. But yeah. when the Blues album comes out on December 2nd, I think that will be another kick, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah, I was talking about the... Uh, the fuse being lit under the harmonica, yeah. you know. So Mick, I think, really enjoyed the the opportunity for us to say, okay, we'll do this song, but where are you going to play the harp solo? And he go, oh well, I know it's going to be the middle solo, or it's going to be the end, or I'll start with it, or you know. But he got really excited about the miking technique of, of the harp, and you know, and uh, delivering it like he used to, and paying tribute to the old blues boys, you know. And before you joined the Stones, were, were you, uh, did you grow up with blues? Or was that something you, you, your parents passed down to you? The blues? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's where I come from. It's where yeah. they come from. Yeah. And in a way, it's like a big, giant uh, jigsaw piece being put into place for me because when I used to go and see the band as a fan back in the early 60s, you know, they used to be playing uh, Slim Harpo and Jimmy Reed songs and stuff, you know. Now that we're doing it again on this new blues album, it's kind of, it, it's a very good feeling for me to sort of go, okay, now we can start again. <laughs> Absolutely. And well, actually, you talk about the, the exhibition coming to New York, and I heard a rumour it may come to Australia next after that. You, maybe you don't even know that yet. But I'm, I'm well, that, I know they've got huge plans. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Well, that's exciting. Um, and certainly, you know, we've, we've always liked seeing the growth of, in Sydney and, and Melbourne. And uh, Australia is very much a second home, maybe a third Well, home. if you don't see us, you'll see bits of us. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> on exhibit. So, um, let's go through a couple of tracks on the album, because uh, Just Your Fool is the first one we heard. Right. Uh, and that's a quick little ditty, that one. And mm. Well, I remember hearing it years ago, Little Walter, and um, as soon as I heard a, a reference of it again, I, I heard the middle, uh, and that's, uh, it's kind of a seven and a half bars, it's like weird, and I was all ready for that. I went, no, just, I follow the vocal on, on the uh, middle eight yeah. uh, for the chord changes, and that works. And the same, there's a few songs that are on the uh, running order there that I'd never heard before, but it, I said, well, you just play the song to me once and then start rolling the tape and I'll cut it, right. you know, in my way. That's incredible. And you and Keith are a great combo as well, you know, bouncing off each other. You know? Yeah. Yeah, Keith and me, you know, we, we've been there and done it. It doesn't have to necessarily have been on that song, but we'll make it our own approach, you know. And, and um, Blue and... Uh, yeah, your Blue and Lonesome was the other one that, that got um, sent to you. Uh, yeah, he texted you and said, hey, I'll check out this song. And that was the one yeah. that started this whole It's thing. one I remember from growing up, you know, yeah. like an old... Uh, um, little Walter. Yeah. So. You've got four Little Walter tracks on the album, so that's just four. Uh, Is there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, just, just point me out, I mean, I'll play them. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, and and like, for me, I'm very pleased that we've made this, this blues album now, you know, because um, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen next year in the, the wake of the release of this blues album because, you know, I'd love to get behind it and, and I'm sure people would love to hear the band play the blues songs. Yeah, yeah, and, and you've played two of them on this little... Yeah. We played Ride Em On Down and yeah. um, the, the uh, Just Your Fool. And Just Your Fool, yeah. 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 And um, did you go, when you were in the desert for Desert Trip, did it look at some of the other bands playing as well? Like some of your old friends, did, you know, it was a brilliant lineup. Really. Yeah, Rab, Dylan, Dylan opening up for you is quite fun again. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he is, uh, is always great to see, always great to see him. And, you know, got to see Townsend again, hadn't seen him for a while and... Uh, the Who sounded great. Um, yeah. Neil Young sounded great. And uh, Mako is always good. Old Paul, nice to see him. And uh, no, it was, it was excellent. Because I, I was actually at the, the Sunset Marquee just a few days ago and the, the security guy there was telling me, he went, yeah, you know, all these people coming and going, uh, you know, at the bar out the back there, you never know who you're going to meet, especially in the, the off week between the two weekends. The, the usual, uh, in the old days, that bar used to be rocking, hey. Yeah. It's, it's a bit quieter these yeah. days, isn't it? It's more civilised, <laughs> right? Imagine what it's like to go up to, especially a studio down Tours. <laughs> and actually, you know, so um, this um, album was recorded in, in Chiswick, in, so it's Mark Knopfler's studio. Mm. Uh, fairly new studio, isn't it? Is it? But it got an old desk to, to get that sound. Um. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it's a pretty good setup there. You know, studios nowadays are a bit like walking into hospitals. You know, it's like oh, we had to funk it up a bit. Yeah. Didn't really feel like uh, it was going to be um, exactly the, the kind of climate that we needed to to play uh, songs in. You know, I mean, we we had to break it in. We, yeah both uh, physically, you know, and um, with our amplifiers and just play the room in and move things around, you know. Because imagine, yeah, some you walk in and it's just too hard because you want to be somewhere cool, like a dive bar. Uh, yeah, you know, it's got to be, it's got to be the right atmosphere to create, yeah. Um, so, it's a 12-track album. Uh, it, it, is 
this an album you could have recorded maybe 40 years ago and it would have sounded similar, or is it something that right now is the right time for it? Uh, being a 12 track sort of jazz, um, sorry, blues covers album, is it something you could have recorded earlier in the Stones era, or is it something that's perfect right oh, now? Oh, it's something we could have recorded at any point during our career. It's just none of us thought that uh, we'd actually get 12 in a row. And, and be serious about it, you know, it's like, you know, what's the catch? You know, this is what we do. And normally it's like, why don't you give us something that, that's a challenge that we've got to go off a tangent and keep in mind what is happening in the music nowadays and take a little bit of that. And when we play what we're, we're good at and what is natural, then I think that's what the band's all about. Oh, well, it's too new. It's you, you, you've got to hear it about another ten more times and then we'll talk. <laughs> and, you, and you never get sick of it, do you? You've, you've heard it a million times already. Oh, no, you, don't, you never get sick of it. Because it's different every time you listen to it. Well, look, um, I, we're all pretty pumped. It, it's literally crept up on us, you know. This, this album, it jumped out there. It's happening December 2. Great. Like, wow. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy it more and you, you know, discover more about it.